Hello friends, welcome to Zeta Axis and today we will discuss about plate tectonic theory. In this topic we will discuss what were the observations leading to plate tectonic theory, what is plate tectonic theory, what are different forces responsible for plate tectonic activities and what are different type of tectonic boundaries. Now remember before plate tectonic theory there were a number of theories which tried to explain different processes occurring on the surface of our earth like formation of mountains, volcanism, formation of trenches, valleys. But all these theories to certain extent failed to explain these processes. The most important of these theories was continental drift theory and seafloor spreading theory. Now most of these theories were based on observations that is they were not backed with strong mathematical models. But in 1967 McKenzie along with Parker and Morgan independently gave a mathematical model which explained all these processes perfectly and this mathematical model was later called plate tectonic theory. Now let's see what were the observations leading to plate tectonic theory. First and foremost was the mapping of earthquakes on the world map. So what geologists did that over the years they collected the occurrence of earthquakes and plotted them on a world map and what they found was this earthquakes were concentrated in certain regions. There was a certain pattern where these earthquakes would occur. You can see here this is our mid oceanic ridge and there was shallow earthquakes. While you can see here that there, are, there is a trench here and we can see that there are intermediate and deep earthquakes here. Similarly, we know that here there are trenches and along with these trenches we can see that deep seated and intermediate earthquakes occur. So because of the co-location of these things, Geologists believe that there must be something occurring beneath the earth here which is giving rise to earthquakes. Moreover, volcanic mountains data was plotted along with the earthquakes and it was observed that the volcanic mountains even had a very high co-location with earthquakes. You can see that all the regions where there was deep seated earthquakes have high number of volcanic activities. Similarly, you can see here that in the Iceland which is on mid oceanic ridge we can see some volcanic activity but most of the volcanic activity could be seen along the trenches. Moreover, most of the seismic activities that is both volcanic and earthquakes you can see is occurs along the continental margins like this is our western margin of uh, North, Amer North American continent this is also western margin of South American continent similarly this is our eastern margin of Asia so you can see most of the seismic activities is occurring along the continental margins and this gave geologists a thought that there must be something occurring beneath the earth's surface which is causing these earthquakes as well as these volcanoes. So let's see what were the observations that led to plate tectonics theory one by one. The most important was continental drift theory which came in 1912 by Wagner where he said that the continents are in continuous motion. This theory is important because it, it changed the direction of thinking of people. Then came the convectional current theory of Arthur Holmes. This provided a mechanism for the movement of continents suggested by Wagner. And this mechanism was even taken by seafloor spreading theory as well as plate tectonic theory. Seafloor spreading theory explained the why there are mid oceanic ridges or trenches are formed on the sea floors. Geologists observe that at the trenches we have deep seated earthquakes while at the mid oceanic ridges we have shallow earthquakes. So this was kind of a pattern which indicated that there is certain process which is occurring at the trenches which is giving a deep seated earthquakes while there is another process occurring at the mid oceanic ridge which is giving shallow earthquakes. Moreover there was a very high overlap between the deep earthquakes and the volcanic regions. So this was also indication that something occurring beneath the surface is causing volcanism as well as, well as deep earthquakes and these both processes must be related somehow. We have already seen that the earthquakes and volcanism occur along the continental margins. You can see in this uh, image here that at the margins of the continents we have most of seismic activity. Over the years continent movement study was done. And in this study it was found that different continents moved in different directions. This direction was independent of each other and their magnitude also varied. They saw that the Arctic ridge has the slowest rate that is 2.5 cm per year while the East Pacific rise near Easter land had the maximum rate of movement that was 15 cm per year. So you can see 
that different parts of earth moved in different directions at different velocities now let's see what exactly is plate tectonic theory before understanding the plate tectonic theory let's understand what is a plate so lithosphere lithosphere is basically crust plus outer mantle that is excluding asthenosphere so here we can see a diagram of our interior of earth and we can see that this is our outer mantle which includes both this brittle part as well as the asthenosphere which is in plastic state while this lithosphere includes the crust as well as the outer mantle's brittle part excluding asthenosphere so in short everything that is above asthenosphere is called lithosphere lithosphere thickness varies it is around 5 to 100 km under ocean while it could go as much as 200 km under continents now this lithosphere is supposed to be broken into different parts and each of this broken part is called a plate each plate can have both oceanic as well as continental parts and based on the region of discussion or based on the maximum quantity whether it is continental part or oceanic part we call it as a oceanic plate or as a continental plate now plate tectonic theory says that the lithosphere which you have already seen it is everything above asthenosphere that is crust plus brittle mantle so lithosphere is divided into seven major and several minor plates these plates are irregularly shaped they move in independent directions with different velocities and they can have both continental as well as lithosphere oceanic lithosphere now these plates move over asthenosphere in independent directions so here you can say that this is our asthenosphere and this is our lithosphere and all these blocks or all this lithosphere moves independently over asthenosphere because asthenosphere is in plastic state so it offers very less resistance to the moving land masses above it now this is a short animation showing how they can move this is not exactly how it is moving but you can see here different blocks or different plates of lithosphere which are moving above the asthenosphere Further, the plate tectonic theory says that it is the boundary of these plates which are seismically very active because these plates are moving independently. So they kind of collide or move apart from each other creating a very active boundaries. And it is at those boundaries we see formation of trenches, mountain, earthquakes, volcanoes. So the seismic area is concentrated to these boundaries. And we can now see these boundaries here in these lines, solid lines. And we can see that the volcanoes and the earthquakes are concentrated on these boundaries. Now based on the type of movement at the boundaries, we can classify the boundaries into different types. The first is a divergent boundary where both of the plates are moving away from each other. Then it comes the convergent boundaries where both of the plates are moving towards each other. And then the transform boundary where the plates are moving parallel to each other. So they are neither moving towards nor away but they are sliding along with each other. Now this is the summary of plate tectonic theory which we have discussed so far. You can pause the video and take a note of it if you want. Now let's see the forces causing movement of plates. There are many forces which contribute to the movement of plates but their contribution is minimal there are two major forces which are mostly responsible for movement of plates the first is the residual or primordial heat from the formation of earth the second is the heat generated by radioactive elements inside of earth so let's see each of them one by one now when the earth was formed it was like a hot ball of molten rocks it had very high heat within it but over the time these rocks started to cool down the surface rocks cooled first they formed a layer which was very poor conductor of heat not allowing the heat from the rocks within to escape out that is why the heat from the birth of our earth was locked inside and it is this heat which powers the movement of plates moreover uh, arthur holmes in 1929 gave the theory that there are radioactive elements unevenly distributed in our earth so you can see here these yellow dots indicate the radioactive elements and you can see that they are concentrated at certain locations while they are sparsely located at other locations. Now what happens when the radioactive elements decay they generate heat. So the regions where they are concentrated they generate more heat and this heat can melt the mantle and this molten mantle will rise up it will reach the asthenosphere 
then it will move horizontally cools down and comes back this cycle continues and it is this movement of the magma in, within the asthenosphere that gives a force for moving the plates lying above it so these are the two major forces which cause the movement of plates let's see different types of plate boundaries the plate boundaries are classified into different types based on the relative movement of plates at these boundaries we have discussed this topic in great detail in another video the link for which is available over here we will discuss the topic in brief here so the first boundary is convergent boundary a boundary is called convergent boundary when the two plates are moving towards each other now based on the different plates which are moving towards each other we can further classify convergent boundary into three types the first is ocean ocean convergent boundary here we see two oceanic plates which are moving towards each other at the margin we see formation of a trench at which one of the oceanic plates subducts volcanic activity occurs and we see formation of volcanic island rocks next is continent continent convergent boundary here we see two continental plates moving towards each other the mantle subducts at the margin but the continental crust does not subduct the continental crust is added to the continental crust of another plate overall thickening the continental crust and that is what we call crustal thickening moreover fold mountains are formed over here the next is continent oceanic convergent boundary here we see that a oceanic plate move towards a continental plate at the boundary we see formation of trench certain volcanic activities occur and we see formation of volcanic mountains now at the convergent boundaries we can see that the plates are subducted and destroyed and that is why we call convergent boundaries as destructive or consuming boundaries moreover at the convergent boundary we see certain volcanic activities which add to the continental crust moreover there are sediments over the oceanic floor which are added to the continental crust because these sediments are much less denser compared to our asthenosphere or mantle and that is why they do not subduct but are added to the continental crust therefore continental crust is created at convergent boundary now another boundary is divergent boundary a divergent boundary is a boundary where two plates move away from each other again based on the different types of plates which are moving away from each other we can classify divergent boundary into three types the first is ocean ocean divergent boundary where two oceanic plates move away from each other at the boundary we see that the magma comes up and it forms two parallel mountain like structure which are separated by a ridge this is called mid oceanic ridge next is continent continent divergent boundary here what happens a plate a continental plate is divided into two parts and they move away from each other forming rift valley as well as block mountains sometimes even volcanism occurs here as we can see our east african rift valley then the third is continent oceanic divergent boundary here we can see that on one side there is a continental plate on other side there is an oceanic plate but as soon as this continental plate moves away we see formation of oceanic plate here so very soon this boundary is converted into ocean ocean divergent boundary see formation of mid oceanic ridges here now at the divergent boundaries we see that the magma comes up and it solidifies it solidifies to form lithosphere so basically lithosphere is formed at the divergent boundary we can also see that the plates are split into two parts here and they move away from each other the third type of boundary is transform boundaries here the plates move parallel to each other neither the crust is created nor the crust is destroyed here we do not see any volcanic activity here and most of the transform faults are formed along the mid oceanic ridges now we will try to understand what kind of landforms and what kind of crust are involved in different types of boundaries so we here we can see that a transform boundary can be formed by any type of crust a divergent boundary can be formed of continent continent or ocean ocean plates we are not saying here continent ocean plate because it is soon converted into ocean ocean divergent boundary that is why we do not classify it then there is continent continent convergent boundary ocean ocean convergent boundary and ocean continent convergent boundary now let's see what kind of landscape features are seen at the transform fault generally features are offset that is if there is a river then the river will be offset and there will be a vein of the river which will be flowing parallel to the fault at the divergent boundary we see formation of block mountains as well as rift valley sometime volcanism also occur the ocean ocean divergent boundary we see mid oceanic ridge formation the atlantic ridge is the best example for that 
at the convergent boundaries for continent continent we see formation of fold mountains alps himalayas are common example for it for ocean ocean convergent boundary we see trench and volcanic island arcs formation aleutian islands is a great example for it now the ocean continent convergent boundary we again see formation of trenches volcanic arcs are formed and mountains are also formed and these mountains are a very good example of it if you see the volcanism then no volcanism occurs at the transform boundary even at the convergent continent continent boundaries we do not see any kind of volcanism certain kind of volcanism can occur at the continent continent divergent boundaries like our east african valley if you see the earthquakes then at the transform boundaries we see shallow to intermediate earthquakes at the divergent boundaries we see shallow earthquakes and at the convergent boundaries we see both shallow intermediate and deep earthquakes i hope this table will help you remember what kind of earthquakes volcanism and landforms are formed at these boundaries in the next topic we will discuss about different types of boundaries please do not forget to join us there notes for all the topics that we discuss will be available on our website zeta-access.com thanks for watching the video and if you like the video please like subscribe and share if you like our effort and like what we are doing then you can use our upi id or patreon id to support us you can follow us on our social media links until then we meet again jai bharat jai gyan thank you